Welcome to the first ever Tuned Tuner Car Shootout. We decided that this year, rather than simply drive and show the cars, we'd put them head to head on a closed road and a racetrack. We brought five tuned cars between thirty and three hundred thousand dollars, and we're gonna duke it out to find which tuner did it best. I'll be testing how the cars drive on the street with a closed section of the stunning Highway 74 south of Palm Springs, while Rolex GT champion Lee Keen will push the cars to their limits at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway, a 2.7 mile, 17 turn road course. Lee and I will then rank the cars based on style, value, drivability on the road and at the limit, and most importantly, lap time. For all the categories but lap time, there can be no ties, meaning we rank the cars in each category and assign points according to rank. For this competition, there are only two rules. The car must be street legal, registered and insured for road use, and the car must run a DOT road legal set of tires. In third place by lap time, this is a heavily modified 1991 Acura NSX by Clarion Builds of Cypress, California. The Acura NSX is one of the most iconic sports cars of the 1990s. Its basic philosophy of being a stylish, taut exotic that provided daily usability was so successful, the car was barely changed over a 15-year production run. Clarion Builds has taken this 91 NSX and completely transformed it from a rough commuter to this stunning showstopper. It's got a custom AEM exhaust, staggered 18 and 19 inch Volk wheels with super sport tires, and a StopTech six piston big brake kit at all four corners. It's suspended by KW Variant 3 coilovers. It's also got a full suite of electronics, including surround cameras, recovered seats and dash, new carpeting, and of course, a kick-ass Clarion stereo. Welcome to the Clarion Builds Acura NSX. With, believe it or not, 230,000 miles on the chassis. It is the oldest car in our test by 16 years. And yes, you heard me correctly. The car was built by Clarion, which is a stereo company. Taking that into account though, this thing is very good. <laughs> what they have done is taken that old 91 chassis and completely stripped it and rebuilt it. So that's about the only thing left that's original. In the rear middle is a 3.2 liter V6 out of a much later NSX, along with a six-speed gearbox instead of a five-speed, and a CompTech supercharger, which is actually overspun and makes 406 horsepower at the wheels. Now, given that this car weighs just around 3,000 pounds, that is a pretty impressive power-to-weight figure. And it delivers that power in a lovely manner. It's an interesting dichotomy with this car because parts of it are very light, other parts of it are very heavy. For instance, the pedals, almost no effort at all. The six-speed shifter, which is very precise, also very, very light. And yet the steering, which is the same unit as used in the 91, has no power. So the steering itself is very heavy. So even though this is a light car, it's actually a bit of, bit of a workout to drive it. It's got coilovers and they put for this test Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires, which are about the stickiest street tire you can buy. It's got good, smooth, even power delivery when it works, which is most of the time. The biggest issue with this car is the overspun supercharger. And what does overspun mean? It means they put a smaller pulley on it to make more power. The problem with that is more power also means more heat. And the intake charge temperatures of this car on this very hot desert day can reach almost 80 degrees Celsius, 
which is insanely hot for intake temperatures. Not happy. Breaking up. Oh boy. Well, it's pretty. I will give them that. One might even argue the prettiest car here. The Lamborghini blue paint. The wheels. That it's all. It all looks right. It all looks good. It all feels very cohesive. Until you realize that in the search for horsepower. They've made it not run as good as it used to. I drove this car before. It made 60 less horsepower, and it worked perfectly. Now, they tuned it for more horsepower, and it's developed a miss right there. So I'm gonna have to stop this review, have them look at it, figure something out, and then I'm gonna send it off to Lee at the track, which is too bad there's issues, because I really like the car, this is a, it's a wonderful street car. If you're on the track and you're chasing lap times, you're gonna find out you're in a 25 year old car and you're fighting an uphill battle. You can buy a newer car that will go faster than this around a track, probably for a lot less money than it would take to build this. But as a street car, as a six, seven tenths, take it through a canyon, go on a road trip type of car, it is very, very nice. And what I love about this car are just the details. The powertrain is pretty standard stuff. Put in a newer NSX engine, add supercharger, done. But the thicker rimmed steering wheel with the stitching, the center console that houses that amazing, amazing Clarion stereo, doesn't look factory, but it looks super, super clean. The detail work is spectacular. I just wish they hadn't tried to chase that 400 horsepower number and ended up with a car that is now much more finicky than it probably needs to be. I don't know what's going to happen when Lee pushes this car to the limit, but on the road at 7 tenths, it's refined, composed, and very special feeling. It rides well, considering how low it is, and the air conditioning blows ice cold on this very hot day. My favorite things about the NSX are the view out of the windshield, which is every bit as wonderful as any modern Ferrari, and the light controls, which means this car can truly be driven every day in modern traffic conditions. On the road, the NSX is the loveliest car of the bunch, so it gets a full 15 points for road manners. We're also awarding it 4 out of 5 points in the style department, but lap times matter, so I sent it over to the track so Lee could have a go and see how fast she is. The NSX was the most challenging car to drive. This car requires a lot of driver skill. It asks a lot from you, and you have to treat it with respect. A lot of feel uh, from the steering. The front will do whatever you want it to, and that's where you could get into trouble. It treated you when you did everything right, and it punished you when you didn't do something right, for sure. The chassis is really nice. Mid-engine platform, nice power, the supercharged engine. You have an old school feel with no power steering, but then you have the sharpness and responsive of a new car. So there's a fine line there. And as long as you're careful, you can have a lot of fun with it. I think there was um, some more speed out of it, for sure, with a, a couple of little small settings just to make it more comfortable. 
The car is a really nice street car. I would say it's much more of a street car than a, than a track car. So I think it did really well. I um, mean, there's a lot of heritage in the NSX and a lot of development went into it back in the day at this point. So it was fun to drive. You know, I'm, I'm glad I got to drive it because I did enjoy it, but you know, I mean, <laughs> had to be careful. The NSX was a favorite going into this contest. It looks incredible and has been restored to an incredibly high standard outside and in. But like the R32 before it, the heat got to the supercharged monster and affected its performance in the 114 degree track test. Lee hustled the NSX to a two minute, three second lap time, 10 seconds behind the leader, good enough for 30 out of 50 for track performance. On the road, the NSX is composed, comfortable, makes great sounds, has all the creature comforts you'd want out of a modern car, and features the best forward view of any car here. At 6 tenths, it's amazing, which is why it earned top marks on the road drive, 15 points. At the track, Lee found it difficult to control at the limit, which combined with frequent trips into limp mode, means it only gets three points for drivability on track last in the category. We gave it four out of five for style because just look at it. Value is calculated by taking the lap time and factoring in the cost of the car as compared to the Mustang, the cheapest car on track. The Mustang's price and lap time was the baseline. Every car after that was judged on how much more it cost and how many seconds faster it went than the Mustang. It only gets six out of 15 points for value because it was a very expensive build and it only went two seconds quicker than our slowest car. We realized that a lot of the resources in the build went to things other than speed, but at a track test, that's the way it goes. The Clarion Builds NSX finished the tuner shootout with a total of 58 points out of a possible 100, second behind the Maximum Motorsports Mustang and bumping the HPA Golf R32 down into third place. And to their credit, they've since fixed the hot weather performance issue of the NSX and it's back on the road turning heads. Uh...